give a cup of cold water to a little one, Jesus will always give us the reward. So Jesus is saying, even when you're not perfect, when you do a little thing for me, I'm very happy. Now that is good news. Because a lot of times people say, I have to do so much. Now, let me tell you, I try to do as much as I can. But I know one thing. Even when I, I give a cup of cold water to a little one, even when I care about people, God loves me. God is very happy. Actually, I want to say this. I'm correct. I want to say, I want to say God loves me no matter what. But whatever little thing I do for Him, He is very happy and He's pleased with them. So this is a biblical teaching. Whatever we can do, even a cup of cold water, we will not lose the reward. He will remember it and He will bless us. That gives us motivation. Yes, whatever we can do for God, God is very happy. But you might say, there are many things I cannot do yet. But that's okay. Whatever we can do, you notice that in the Bible. The emphasis is on what Whatever you do for God, even when you have faith like a little mustard seed. Is that great faith? Is that great faith? Yes. Just the faith of a little mustard seed, does it mean it's great or small? small. It's small. Even when you have small faith, you can move the mountain. So Jesus is saying, don't wait until you are perfect. No one is perfect. No one is perfect. But whatever you do, you say, I'm sorry for my sins. I trust in Jesus as my Savior. I love God and I obey God. Whatever you do, even a cup of cold water, God will reward you and God is happy with you. So in your whole day, if you try to bless people and help people, God is very happy. Even there are many things we cannot do yet. But God said, you have done this, and God is happy. But of course, if we can give a cup of cold water, then we can do more. We can care about people. We can pray for people. We can build up the spiritual life. But the main thing I'm talking about is being motivated by the grace of God, not motivated by the law. The law is like this. The law is like this. I have to do this. I have to do that. And there's so much I cannot do yet. So I'm not good enough. That is motivated by the law. Motivated by grace is like this. God loves me no matter what. Can you say this with me? God loves me no matter what. He cares about me all the time. He cares about me. And appreciate every little thing I do. Yeah. He appreciates everything. No, liberal, every little thing I've done for him. Can you say this? And he appreciates every little thing I've done for him. Whatever effort I have for God, God is very happy. Even when I'm not perfect. But when I'm not perfect, I ask God to forgive me. And God is very happy. Does that give you relief? Let me ask you. Now in... 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2. You can write this down. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 2. What it says is, what is required of a steward is that he is faithful. What is required of a steward is that he is faithful. What it means is, what is required of us is not that we are perfect. We want to be perfect, but we cannot be perfect. But when we're not perfect, we ask God to forgive us, but we are faithful. Let me ask you, have you tried your best? Have you tried to love God more? To obey Him and serve Him? Have you tried that? Yes, now there are many things we need to take care of in our life. But at least have you tried? Have you tried? If you have tried, please raise your hand. If you have tried, if you have tried, okay? Thank you. Now put down your hands. Let me ask a second question. If you really have tried hard, can you raise your hand? You try hard. It's not just a little effort, but you did try hard. Can you raise your hand? Okay? Now, what I want to say is, if you have tried, God is happy with you. 
Of course we can grow more, but don't think about how much you would have not done. Let me use an illustration of a little child. The little child go to school and the grade is not good. Out of 100 points, he only got 20 points. And then next time when he had an examination, he got 60 points and he passed. And then the parents might say, you only got 60 points, you should get 70 points, you should get 90 points. How would the child feel? Discouraged. Yeah, he would feel what? Discouraged. Discouraged, even if I work so hard, that the parents is not happy with me. But if the parents say, wow, last time you had 20 points, now you have 60 points, that's great. You're a great kid, you'll be getting better and better. Would the child be encouraged? Yes, yes sir. Now that is how God is. If we give a cup of cold water to your little ones, he is very happy and he will remember it and he will reward us. You by no means lose your reward. So when we are faithful, we are trying. We are trying. Of course we want to be more faithful, but we are trying. We can say, God is happy with me. Can you say this with me? God, God is, is happy, happy with me when I try. When I try. So I can relax more. Say it. So I can relax more. I can live in the love of God. I can live in the love of God. God is happy with whatever I can do for Him. God is happy with whatever. And I can do more. And I can do more to please Him. To please Him. Let me use an illustration of my wife. I have a very good relationship with my wife. Actually, everywhere I carry her picture. In my cell phone there. And my wallet here, I always have a picture here. Okay. Now, my wife, she really loves me. And I really love her. I treasure the relationship. I want to keep the relationship in a very high level. And let me tell you this, one thing about my wife. Sometimes I tell her, I ask her, tonight do you have time? And she would be very happy. She'd say, what do you have in mind? What do you want to do? And I would say, let's go out for a walk. And then she would tell me many times in a day, do you know why I'm very happy today? And she knows the answer, but she wants me to say it. And then I said, because I asked you to go out tonight. And then she said, yes, when you ask me, it makes me happy for the whole day. Now that is how my wife is. Whatever I do for her, little thing for her, she's very happy and she will smile. Whenever I give her something, a gift, and say, her, you know, say I love her, she will be oh, like a little child, very happy. Let me tell you, God is like that too. Whenever we do a little thing for God, God is very happy. But people are not like that. Because many people live under the law. When we do something, they say, it's not good enough. I heard a story. A husband gave a bunch of flowers to the wife. And the wife said, how much did you spend? Oh, the flowers look terrible. <laughs> Let me ask you. Does the men have courage to give her any flower in the future? No, because she criticized him for what he has done. But God is not like that. I hope we all believe that. God loves us very much. And even a cup of cold water we give to the little ones, he's very happy. When we try to be faithful, he's very happy. But when I know that I can please God so easily, I want to do more and more and more for him. Let me tell you, I'm 66 years old. I'm 66, but I'm still strong. Yeah. <laughs> Look at my muscle. And I don't need any eyeglasses. Yes. I thank God. God, you're so good. Yeah. And God has given me many good teachings. And that is why at 66, I can stay in Hong Kong and enjoy life. You know, there's air conditioning. Everywhere is cool and it's easy and happy and I can play tennis every day and ping pong every day, table tennis every day. I can do that. But I go to different countries. Even when it's very hot, even when there are a lot of mosquitoes, 
I still go. It's not that I think, you know, I, that, that I thought I didn't do enough. It's because I want to do more and more for God. Because I know God is happy with every little thing I've done for Him. That way I'm relaxed. I'm relaxed. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. For I am gentle and meek. Take my yoke and carry my burden, and, and then uh, I will be with you. You know, I I will bless you because my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Now you look at this verse. How does Jesus want us to live? In a very relaxed way. No burden. Now, I have no burden, but I have motivation to serve God. I have motivation to serve God. I, whenever I see anyone, I try to help and encourage. I have the motivation to do more and more. Whenever I've done anything not so good, if I have not taught well enough, then I'll say, I'm sorry for my sins, I, I will do better. And I know that God is happy, so I put that down right away. So I hope to understand this mentality. No one is perfect. But I don't have to be perfect to please God. Whatever little thing I do for Him, He's very happy. And He always loves me. And if I have the motivation to love Him and care about Him, He is very happy and He'll for sure bless me. That way, I'm, what, I'm very relaxed because His yoke is easy. Now when we take His burden, you know, when He take His yoke and carry His burden, and then He said that you'll find rest in your soul. You'll find rest in your soul. Then you have relaxation. Jesus wants us to find rest in your soul. Now look at me. When I pray to God, I'm like that. Oh, hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Lord, I love you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Now you might say, what? Well, let me tell you, the joy is not me laughing. It's the joy of the Holy Spirit. After experience of the Holy Spirit in 1998, that evangelist Carlos Anacondia from Argentina in South America came to Hong Kong and he laid hand on me and immediately I felt power like electricity and I experienced a great love fill my heart so powerfully and cried for a long time and I said, God, you're so full of love I'm so happy that I can experience your love and then after that, every day I love God, I, I hunger for God I, I spend more time loving God. And then, one day I find that whenever I think of Jesus, His joy will flow out from me. His joy will flow out. <laughs> and whenever I think of Jesus, His joy will flow out. And I can feel power go through my whole body. And then, when I pray for people, many people experience the peace and the love and the joy of the Lord. In my group of people in Hong Kong, some of them, whenever they pray, they're filled with the joy of the Lord. What I want to say is, God's yoke is easy, His burden is light. Whenever we carry His yoke, carry His burden, He's very happy with us. Whenever we serve Him, He's very happy with us. Now, there are many people in your church who may not be good enough. He may not be good enough, but that's, a, you know, this is a person in the church. He's not good enough. But very often people just look at the negative side. You're not good enough. You're not, not good enough. And that way they have pressure. But whatever they do to serve God, I always tell them, I'm so happy to see you grow. I'm so happy you have the motivation to serve God. Even though they're not perfect, but I'm still very happy with them. And then they feel motivated. That way we can motivate more people. Do you think that's the biblical teaching? Yes. 
Yes. To live in the grace of God. Yes. Now I'm going to use some Bible verses to explain this truth. And I hope that you'll keep it in mind. And then I'll ask you to share in small group. To apply this to your life. To find out how much law and condemnation you have in you. And how you can take care of that. Do you have much condemnation and requirement in your heart that you feel pressure? Do you feel this pressure? Or are you totally free? Everything I do for God, God is very happy. Let me ask you, what do you have more? Do you have the grace of God more or the law of God more? Honest, which one do you have more? Okay, it should be the grace of God. If you have the grace of God, then you will be very happy and joyful and peaceful and relaxed. At the same time, your motivation. Now some people have this wrong idea. If people have too much love of God, too much grace, they'll be lazy. That's not true. Let me tell you, I teach both the grace of God and His law. I teach both. Because the Bible says that he who reap to the flesh will reap destruction. I don't want to read destruction. Any of my sin will bring destruction. But if I have any sin, I'll ask God to forgive me. Any moment when there are any sinful thoughts, I'll take care of it right away to stop the sin. I know sins are destructive. But when if I have sinned, I ask God to forgive, then I'm free. But when I live in the grace of God, I really have the motivation not to sin anymore. So I can you know, really say no to my sins much easier than before. Anytime, for instance, a very sexy lady stand in front of me, very sexy. In me, I say, if this brings me any lust, I will not look at her. Or if I look at her, I just look at her as a person. I will not look at her as a sexual object because it will destroy my relationship with God. And if I sin like that, it will take away the blessings of God. And I don't want to live like that. And I have the motivation even though no one sees me, I will take care of any negative thought in my heart so that I can concentrate in the Lord, so that I can enjoy His presence all the time. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. And I will talk about that more. This few days I'll talk about how to handle sins and negative feelings and negative uh, thinking and how to raise up people to serve God and how to help people to handle the problems in their life so that they can become useful servants of God in the kingdom of God that they can be used by God. Okay, let us look at Isaiah chapter 49 verses 15 to 16. Now, if you don't have time to find the passages, you can just write down the verse and then you can just listen to me. Isaiah 49 15, verse 15 to 16. Just verse, actually just verse 15 here. Can a mother forget a baby at her breast and have no compassion at the child she has born? Those she may forget, I will not forget you. How many of you are mothers here? How many of you are mothers here? Okay. Have you forgotten your baby somewhere on a train or bus or a shop? <laughs> no way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> that you will always remember the baby. When you remember the baby, do you have good feelings, happy feelings? When you look at the baby, do you have good feelings? You know, one time I went to a hospital, a children's hospital, the part is a children's hospital, and there was a mother carrying a baby. The baby must have some sickness. And the mother stayed in the hospital with the baby. And the baby was asleep. And the mother looked at the baby from the head to the toe, and from the toe to the head, and when she looked at the baby, she was doing this. She was smiling all the way. I wish I had a camera. In those days, we did not have cell phones. If I had cell phone, I would take a picture of her. She was looking so happy. Even though the baby had sickness, she was so happy to look at the baby. Let me tell you, God is thinking about us all the time. And God is looking at you right now with joy and happiness. When you come to, you want to learn more about God, how to serve God better, God is very happy. And God looks at you 
with happiness and with a big smile. And he's very happy with you. Can you think of God like that? That he remembers you, whatever problem you have. But many Christians say, God remember me, God remember me, I'm in trouble, please come to help me. Actually, God remembers all the time. So when I pray, I don't pray like this. I say, God, you're remembering me now. You are thinking of me now and you're blessing me now. Whenever I pray to you, you're very happy. <laughs> Whenever I think of God, I know He's happy with me. That way, I'm relaxed. I have motivation. I don't feel pressure. I feel motivation. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But many people pray like this. Oh God, bring revival. We need revival. Ah. Oh, come Lord, come Lord. Let me tell you, today you get a revival. Because God wants to give us revival. When we say, Lord, I love you. I want to serve you more. I want to live in your love. I want to be motivated by your love. God is very happy to bring you revival. Revival of each person's life is very easy because God wants to bring it to you. It's the people's part. People are lazy. People are not motivated to serve God. That is why people lose the motivation. But when you continue to love God, when you continue to serve Him, He's very happy. When you change your life, Lord, please help me. Change my life. God is very happy to change you. God is very happy to bless you. So revival is not, e is not difficult to get. Today, you can say to the Lord, you love me so much. I love you very much. I want to give my life to you. Every second of my life, I want to give to you. I want to pray to you all the time. I want to serve you all the time. I want to bless everyone around you, around me. Let me ask you, is that revival? That is revival. When we are willing to love God and serve God and live in His love, we did that as revival. And when you and your whole church is revived, then there will, re there will be revival in your church and then you can spread the revival to different churches. Let me tell you, God wants to bring revival. It's just Christians, whether we want to dedicate our life to God, whether Christians want to serve God, God is looking at us all the time. Jesus loves me. So every time you can sing with confidence, Jesus loves me. Yeah, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yeah. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with His love and He will rejoice over you with singing. Now this second part is very, very wonderful. It says, He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Okay, now what is where it says that God takes great delight in you, He's happy with you, and He'll quiet you with His love. It's like you we are babies, He'll quiet you with His love. Oh, 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 oh. I love you so much. You are my baby. I love you so much. Jesus is like that. He quiet us, quiet us with his love. And he rejoice over you with singing. He rejoice over you. 
I'm so happy with you. I'm so happy with you. I'm so happy with you. I rejoice over you with singing. God is like that. He rejoices over us with singing. He's very happy with us. So this verse tells us that God's love is filled with positive feelings. His love is not just in the mind. His love is in his feelings. Now, generally, grandmother, grandfather, when they see the grandkids, they're generally more happy, right? Because the children, they see more problem with the children. But when a grandfather or grandmother see a little grandchild come over, would a grandfather and mother be very happy? Yes. That is how God is. He will delight over us with singing. He's always rejoiced over us with singing. That He's happy with us. Now let me tell you, please try to let this teaching sink in your mind. Amen. Then you say, God is rejoicing over me now. God is happy with me now. God is happy with me. He's blessing me right now. Can you live like that? God is rejoicing over me now. When I love Him. Yes, Lord, I love you. I want to follow you. Can you say this with me? You yes, sincerely say this. God, I love you. God, I, love I appreciate you. your love. I appreciate your love. I really want to follow you. I really want to follow you. I really want to serve you. I really want to serve you. And then how would God respond? He's very happy with you. He say, I love you. I like you. When you're like that, I really like you. Can we respond to God like that? And if we do, He's very happy. So every day when you wake up, this is how I wake up. Hallelujah, the Lord is loving me now. The Lord is happy with me now. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> That's how I am every day. Can you live like that? Yes, when you live like that, then you live in the joy of the Lord. Amen. The joy of the Lord, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Ha ha ha! Oh Lord Jesus. Okay, now. Psalm 139, verse 5. Psalm 139, verse 5. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. I say this again. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. What it means is that God is in front of us and behind us. And God is laying his hand upon us to bless us. So God is with us all the time, and He's blessing us. Let me ask you, when we sin, does God forsake us? When we sin, how will we feel in our heart when we sin? We feel the moving of the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit moves in us to move us to repent. So we know that when we sin, God doesn't forsake us. He will move in our heart to move us to repent. And then when we praise God and worship Him, do you feel joy? Yes. So then is God blessing us. So when we sin, God comes to bless us. When we obey Him and worship Him, come, God comes to bless us. So God blesses us all the time. Say that with me. God blesses us all the time. Even when we sin. He comes to bless us. He comes to bless us. To change our heart. To change our heart. When we worship Him, when we worship Him, He fills us with His joy and love. He fills us with His joy and love. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So He's with us day and night. He's in front of us and behind us, and He's laying His hand upon us. That is why Jesus said to Peter, "If I don't wash you, you have no part with me." If I don't wash you, that means if I don't serve you, you have no part with me. That means God serves every single person. Does God serve you? Yes. 
So God is like a servant, serving us. But let me ask you, is God our slave? Is no. God our slave? He's not. But He serves us like a slave day and night, all the time, even when we don't obey Him. He still serves us, right? Yes. When we disobey Him, it still moves in our hearts. So can we say to God, God, you serve me, you serve me all the time. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. And I thank you for your, for you serving me. I thank you for your serving. I thank you. Hallelujah. Can we all say, God is so wonderful? You serve me all the time. You serve me even when we sin. And you serve me when we come close to you. And you rejoice over me with singing. So we can rejoice with you all the time. Now, from what I talked about this morning, have you noticed that Jesus is really happy with us all the time? Now, when Peter was about to deny Jesus three times, and Jesus said this. Jesus said, Satan is trying to sift you like sifting wheat. But I pray for you that you will not lose your faith. And when you turn back, strengthen your brother. Now think about this. Peter has followed Jesus three years. And he was about to deny Jesus. But Jesus did not say Peter, what happened to you? You see my miracles, you know I'm the Christ, the Son of the living God. How can you deny me? Did Jesus talk like that? No. But he said, I pray for you so that you will not lose your faith. And when you turn back, strengthen your brother. Can you see how Jesus talks? And how Jesus' heart is? He always gives people opportunity. He always blessed people. When he entered Jerusalem, what did he say? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you have killed the prophets sent to you, and you have stoned to death the people who have been sent to you. And I tried to gather you, I want to gather you, but you were not willing. Jerusalem has not accepted God in so many ways, and stoned to death the prophets and the people sent to, sent to Jerusalem. But Jesus said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I want to gather you like a hen trying to gather the chick. But you're not willing. Even when Jerusalem is not willing, Jesus still trying to gather them. Can you see God's love even to the rebellious Israel? But God still loves them. Now, the Bible does contain warning. In the Old Testament and New Testament, when Jesus spoke to the Pharisees, he spoke very harsh words. But when Nicodemus came to him, came to him, did he speak harsh words to Nicodemus? No. So when anyone come to Jesus for help, anyone want to follow Jesus, Jesus is always happy. Jesus is, will always forgive and bless only when people reject him and deny Him and don't obey Him. And then Jesus will speak words to warn them to wake up. You have to wake up. But even when He spoke to the disciples about faith, you of little faith, He said to them. But then He said, when you have faith like a little mustard seed, you can move the mountain. So Jesus, what Jesus' words is this, he rebuilt the disciples for lack of faith, but immediately he gives them hope. Can you see this? He immediately gives them hope. So as pastors and leaders, we want to give people hope. We don't want to say people to people, you're no good, you're not doing well enough. You, have, you know, sometimes people talk like this. Oh, you feel this time you're late, you didn't do what I told you to do, and talk like that. Does it help people? Now the best way is like this. God is very happy 
with you when you serve God. And everything you do for God, God is very happy. But we want to work on how we can do better. And when you can come punctually, God is very happy and He'll bless you. And, uh, and I'm very happy with your efforts. And we can work on it. And, and what are some ways that hinder you? Can we work on that? So in that way, we're giving people hope, right? Can you see the distinction? Let me ask you, have you seen Christians talk to you like this? You didn't read the Bible enough, you didn't pray enough, you didn't serve God enough, you didn't do well enough. Have you heard Christians talk to you like this? Does it help you spiritually? No. But when Christians say, I've seen your effort, I've seen that you work for the Lord, I see that you have loved the Lord, and, and then when they encourage you, we can all love God together more. Do you feel more encouragement? Yes. So, what I'm saying this morning first is, this is a summary, what I talk about, and then we'll have discussion. So you put this in your mind. First, God's love is without condition. Can you say it with me? God's love is without condition. God's love is without condition. Right. He loves us even when we sin. He loves us even when we sin. And He is happy with us even when we give a cup of cold water. And He is happy with us even when we give a cup of cold water. Every little thing we do for God is very happy. Every little thing we do for God, He is very happy. So God always give us hope. God always give us hope. And God always appreciates what we have done for Him. God always appreciates what we've done for Him. So when we try our best to love Him, He's very happy. And He bless us and reward us. And we want to talk like God to people. We want to speak words of grace. We want to say to our husband and wife and the members, I'm so happy that you love God. I'm so happy to have you. I'm so happy that you're serving God. And what you've done for me is wonderful. Can we talk like this? Yes, sir. Instead of saying, you're too late. You didn't do well enough. You, didn't. you should do more. We can say more words of appreciation. That way, and we also can appreciate ourselves. I have done this to serve God. And God is very happy. Thank God. God has moved me to obey Him. Can you say this? Thank God. Thank God. God has moved me to obey Him. God has moved me to obey Him. God has moved me to love Him. God has moved me to love Him. God has moved me to depend on Him. God has moved me to depend on Him. And God is very happy when I do that. And God is very happy when I do that. So I can rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Ha ha. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Now when you preach, can you preach like this? So joyful. Hallelujah. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Do you like a joyful preacher? Yes. Or just a stern preacher? <clears throat> Do you want to do you like a stern preacher? The characteristic of heaven. Jesus said in the parable, Come and enjoy the happiness of your master. Heaven is full of happiness, right? We can be filled with happiness, and at the same time, we want to serve God. I have the grace of God, and I have the law of God. I want to obey God in every way. Because if I seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these things will be added to us. And you can see my example. How? My eyes, I don't need eyeglasses even at a year of 66 years old. And God gives me health and strength. My voice, people heard my voice on the phone and said, You are a young man. <laughs> I said, I'm a young man in my heart. Hallelujah! <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you rejoice in the Lord? Yes. Oh. Now, right now, what I'm going to ask you to do is divide into groups of three 
and then discuss why is it hard for Christians to have this joy and relaxation in the Lord? Why? And how can we overcome that? What are the hindrances? And how can we overcome that in our life and ministry? Okay, and then I will ask some groups to come out to share your conclusion. Now, can you write this down again? So why are so many Christians living under pressure? and have not much fruit, not much fruit in the spiritual life and ministry. And what are hindering them? And how can we overcome them? So just a brief sharing of maybe uh, 15 minutes and I'll see how it is going. And then just three, and it can be close friends, whatever, whoever is around you. So just turn your chairs around. But then you have to report and come out and share what are some hindrances and how we can overcome that and how we can change our mentality. How we can change our mentality. Let me ask you, do you have any question now? Whether it's possible to change the mentality to say God is happy with me. Whatever I do for Him, He's happy with me. So as can serve God with joy and peace. Is it hard to have this mentality? Is it hard? No, it's not. And is this scriptural? Is this scriptural? Yes. yes. But let me ask you, are many Christians really that joyful and always speaking the words of grace instead of speaking the word of law? Does your husband or wife speak to you with words of grace? Husband and wife speaking with, to the wife with words, words of grace is like this. I speak to my wife like this all the time. I like you so much. I'm happy to hear your voice. I'm happy for all the good things in your life and you help me. You give me suggestions. Even when my wife gives me suggestions, I say thank you. That gives me a chance to improve. I always thank her and I always like her. If I have any suggestion, I'll say to her, you know, we can all improve together and can we work on this? And whenever I tell her, I notice you have a little emotions and then she will take care of that. So, I will always talk to her with words of, of grace to give her acceptance and love and care. And when I talk to people, I talk to people like that all the time too. So, so you can share how can people talk with the words of grace more, okay? So any question, any question about what the teaching this morning, just now? I have more teaching, much more. These few days, I hope you are committed. Yeah. Let me ask you, this first teaching, is it important? Yeah. Yeah. Have you noticed this teaching a lot around you? Yeah. Have you noticed many, many people really feel with joy and really relax and enjoy God and say God is happy with everything I've done and and I'm motivated to serve God. Have you noticed a lot of Christians like that? Yes. Okay, if you have noticed that, that's great. But I've gone to places they say, we've seen too many Christians and even pastors under pressure. There are too many Christians and pastors living under pressure. Not much joy and freedom. And it's always requiring, wanting people to do more. Always giving pressure. And I hope that we all can live with grace.